You downloaded After Effects to get creative, not to write code. I totally understand. And yet these five expressions are shortcuts that will save you time and get your creative vision out faster. If you're an After Effects beginner, you're in the right place. If you're a bit more of a seasoned AE expert, then there'll be a few of my personal tips and tricks along the way. Watch to the end, the last expression is just that touch more complicated, but it is so useful. My name is Grant M. Fletcher. I've been in After Effects for well over a decade and even I I'm a little bit terrified of expressions, so don't worry, we'll do it together. Okay, first off, how do we even input an expression? So navigate to the layer and property you want to animate. Say we want to make these position keyframes loop. So you Alt or Option click on the stopwatch and a new little text box will appear. You can use this triangle to select an expression from the expression language menu or you can type it freehand, in which case AE will give you helpful suggestions and you can just hit enter. The way I suggest you do it though is find someone online in a forum who's already done all the work for you and just copy paste it, that's what I do. There's a link in the description to find my Google Doc with all the expressions covered in this video. It's the one that I use every day. You can hide the expressions by using this little arrow and you can also see that expression values are red and are not the usual blue. Oh, and to reveal the expression on a layer, you can select it and use the shortcut EE or select the timeline instead and EE will reveal all instances of expressions, which is super handy. Now, even though it might not sound it, the simplest of expressions is this comp dot layer bracket bracket inheriting a property from a different layer. Now, what I'm talking about is pick whipping. Say I want the position of this text layer to be dictated by the position animation of this text layer. We're gonna select both layers and hit P for position and then drag this pick whip onto the position value of the other layer. And now look, they move together. As mentioned before, if the value is red, we can scroll down this little arrow to edit the expression and lo and behold, the act of using pick whip has auto-generated an expression for us. There are so many things you can link in this way. One of my favorites is to link the colors from a master comp across an entire project. So if for no good reason, a client decides to change the color from teal to cerulean, it's just one click rather than 500. Next is time. Let's say you wanna make some text look like it's underwater. A good start is to throw the turbulent displace effect on there. It's currently static and we want it to undulate, big brain word. Instead of putting a keyframe at the start and the end of the composition to animate the evolution, we're gonna type time, asterisk, one. Asterisk, asterisk, asterisk. Man, that's hard to say. Time, asterisk, one. We've just told it that every degree of rotation, of which there are 360, should take one second which is obviously a little too slow. Let's ramp that up to say 400 degrees every second. So time multiplied by 400. And now it's some rough seas. Lots of effects have an evolution value, so it's really useful there, but it can also be used on values such as rotation to give you a constant speed that never ends. Next, I'm gonna show you how to make this, or this, or this, or even this. Yeah, it's not an expression, but believe me, it is super easy. You simply go to the link in the description to buy one of my After Effects title templates, and within a few clicks, you have pro titles in your next masterpiece. Nostalgia has been used by Marshmallow, Scando was created in collaboration with Maddie Hapoya, and visuals from Arcade and Alpha have been used in some of the biggest music venues in the world. You can make keyframes loop in a cycle, ping pong, or even continue on indefinitely. Now I use loop out the most, which will simply repeat the keyframes over and over until the end of the layer. So say you wanna make a looping texture overlay. Instead of copy and pasting your sequence 100 times, simply trim your comp to the work area and then drag that texture comp into your master comp as a pre-comp. Now we're gonna right click, we're gonna select time, enable time remapping. Now alt click on the stopwatch and type loop out, open brackets, close brackets. Now we just select the blending mode we want, maybe adjust the opacity and done. Loop out continue is great for when you are adjusting constant speeds. 
Now you can just drag the keyframe up and down the timeline depending on how fast you want it to go. And now is probably a really good time to mention that expressions are case sensitive. And if you're missing a bracket or a quotation mark, you'll get this little exclamation mark error. And then you can click here to find out what the exact problem is. Not that I ever understand what the heck it means, but you know. If you haven't heard of Wiggle yet, I'm pretty surprised and I know you'll see it come up countless times over your After Effects journey. It's often used on position or opacity to create randomized movement, again without the need for keyframes. So for example, you can use the Wiggle expression on a 3D camera's position to give it a subtle handheld vibe. The first value is the frequency, how often it moves. And the second is amplitude, how much it moves. So here we have a value that jumps around two times a second up to 10 points above or below the original starting value. To get a stop motion look, I'll use wiggle with posterize time to get that constant movement on both the position and the rotation. I often use wiggle for my retro looks as well. Let's for example, isolate the wiggle to vertical only like this to give a subtle jitter. Now, one thing that really bugs me about After Effects is often an anchor point isn't defaulted to the center of the layer. This happens most often with shape layers and text. Sure, if I need to say, rotate something from the outside edge, I can just move the anchor point using the pan behind tool. You hit the shortcut Y and you drag it wherever without moving the layer. But more often than not, why is it not in the center? Anyway, here's how you fix that. It's been really useful when making templates for clients or to use in my digital products. Shameless plug. With the layer selected, hit A for anchor point, then copy paste this slightly long expression. In essence, this is calculating the middle of the layer by pixels. Uh, we're taking the left side as a starting point plus the entire width and then halving it to get the horizontal center. And then pretty much the same for the vertical. It's the top plus the height divided by two to get the second coordinate. Now, when I change my font or even change the text, the anchor point will always be centered. And you can also tweak this expression for left or right aligned text. If you want to learn more After Effects tips and tricks, then hit subscribe and also watch this next video. Jesus loves you. So do I.